Okay, let us begin our metta practice. Let us recite these passages together. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. With this very noble thought of metta, let us begin our practice and practice our mindfulness. We pay total attention to our breathing which is very natural, normal, simple, universal, common denominator of all living beings. As we pay attention to the breath, we notice the breath touching the nostrils as we breathe in, expanding our lower abdomen, expanding our chest area, as we breathe out, our lower abdomen contract, chest area contracts, breath leaves the nostrils, and this is, these are the functions, activities that take place that we can notice every time we breathe in and breathe out. Whether we notice or not, they happen all the time. And then, when we pay attention to our breath, we notice the f breath is changing. The feeling of breath is changing. Perception is changing. Thoughts of breath is changing. Consciousness is changing. When we breathe in, we feel the feeling that we have is no longer when we breathe out. Similarly, perception of inhaling will no longer be when we exhale. Thought we have when, of inhaling will no longer be there when we exhale. Consciousness of inhaling will change when we breathe out. All this change as we breathe in and out, they also are not happening uh, in uh, dis di uh, discrete fully. They happen very conspicuously, clearly. Only thing, only when we pay attention we notice. Otherwise they go on and on and on all the time. And then the mind does not try to hold on to anything. Since <coughs> things are changing, no point in trying to hold on to changing anything. So the greed or desire for holding on fades away temporarily. And then the body is relaxed, mind is relaxed, breath is relaxed. In the relaxed state of mind, metta feeling 
arises. And then our presentment fades away. And then our compassion arises when restlessness and worry fade away. Also, we remember we started this whole series of talks and sessions of meditation practice when we came to know that there are so many millions of suffering beings, some particularly due to this COVID-19, and we want to share a little bit with them, and that is our compassion. And then restlessness and worry fades away. And then the mind becomes even more active as we practice. Our sleepiness and drowsiness fade away. Sleepiness and drowsiness arises only due to various things. Uh, one is uh, when we lose interest, we don't uh, have any uh, desire to continue, then we become lethargic and sleepy. That fades away as our practice becomes clearer and clearer. And then as the practice becomes clearer, all this happening, we notice them happening. Then our doubt of the practice, doubt about the results of our practice fades away. There are all kinds of doubts in this particular case. The doubt about the practice, some people ask what benefit do we get when we practice meditation. As we practice, we see the benefits right there. That is the nature of Dhamma. That is the nature of dependent origination. So, when we see all this, we gain joy, especially rising, when we see rising and falling, joy arises. That is what Buddha said, yato yato sammasiti khandhanam udhyabhyam labhati piti pamajyam. Joy, happiness and tranquility arise in the mind when we see rising and falling of the five aggregates. I mentioned the five aggregates in a very simple terms, like the breath, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. Whether we use big terms or simple terms, these are the five aggregates. And when we see them rising and falling, honestly, sincerely, we become very happy, full of joy and tranquil for seeing the truth. When we see the truth, what else can we be? We cannot be unhappy, we cannot be disappointed, we must be happy seeing because the truth is the sweetest, as the Buddha said to Alavaka, Satchang have sadhu tarang rasana, among the tests, all the tests, the sweetest test is the truth. That is why we gain joy and happiness when we see rising and falling impermanence. And it then gain concentration. When we gain concentration, our awareness of rising and falling becomes even sharper and cleaner because we see the subtlest changes. Therefore, let us continue our practice. We will see all this happening in us, that is the nature of Dhamma, experiencing, practicing Dhamma in us. Pachyattang Vedatabha and uh, Sandhitthik and so on. These are the Dhammas that we see experience in us anytime we practice meditation, mindfulness, and so on. With this, let us continue our practice.
दुखपता च निर्दुख भयपता च निर्भया शोक पता च निशोक हंतु सभ्य पिपानिनो मे द सफरिंग बी फ्री फ्रॉम सफरिंग मे द फियर सक बी फ्री फ्रॉम फियर मे द ग्रीविंग बी फ्री फ्रॉम ग्रीफ सो टू मे ऑल बींग्स बी विद दिस मेत्ता थॉट in our mind let us focus on the dhamma talk that i want to continue uh, yesterday i started talking on the uh, right view of two kinds of right views uh, one is uh, uh hold sum uh and uh, uh and yet with the uh, tens uh, uh and partaking of marriage ripening in the acquisition uh if it were not very clear uh let me uh, repeat some of the things i have not uh, elaborated uh when we discuss dhamma uh it should be very uh, clear in our mind uh, so that we can uh, see how it works in our samsaric existence uh the the right view is uh, meritorious definitely uh that is why it is called merits partaking of merits uh and buddha said don't be afraid of merits and he said that when you do marriage you repeatedly do it again and again if you cannot do it at least think about it uh, all he said in pali i try to simplify and say all in english uh, to save time and make it even clear for people so marriage is uh, things that makes us happy sukha setan adhivachana it is uh, synonymous of happiness uh, or punya or marriage is another name for happiness and that is exactly what we want we want to be happy uh, we want to be happy today we want to be happy tomorrow and if we were not yesterday today tomorrow and future we want to be happy so this is uh, the nature of punya a uh, whole some uh, thoughts words and deeds and these are the things that uh, uh, go go along with us uh, uh buddha said in many places kirapavasim purisan durato sotimagatang and so forth it is just like waiting for a, a very good uh, uh relative who has been away for a long time uh you are waiting for that person to come home so you can uh, see that person talk to the person kiss and hug and dance and so forth similarly when you pass away uh, your marriage is marriage are waiting to welcome you uh, and that in that life so you can be happy in this life you think uh, certain things you cannot uh, accomplish uh, you cannot enjoy and therefore you wish to have them in the next life and so for this marriage or punya is the uh, is a what you, what i call a, a backpack for sansara sankara is the backpack for sansara journey for this journey we have to have this kind of uh, backpack 
uh, to enjoy every life. Uh, enjoying every life simply means that we uh, like it uh, and we desire. So this uh, uh, right view, uh, and right, not only right view, uh, then uh, uh, right uh, thought, uh, wholesome thought, uh, thought of uh, letting go, thought of non-cruelty, thought of uh, non-angry, -ang that means uh, nekkama sankappa, vyapa sankappa, avisa sankappa. These are very wholesome uh, thoughts. A thought of friendliness, thought of compassion, thought of uh, generosity and thought of letting go. All these are wonderful thoughts. When we have this friendly thought, we will be happy. When we have thought of generosity, we will be happy. And so forth. These are wholesome thoughts. And then when we have wholesome thoughts, naturally, we want to do wholesome uh, actions. Uh, we don't want to kill because uh, killing makes us very unhappy, very painful. We don't want to do that. We will be very happy not to kill. Uh, let others live their lives. Uh, then uh, we don't want to steal uh, because uh, uh, it is also degrade our personality and people call us thieves, and if we are caught by the uh, police and so on, we will be in trouble. So we don't want to steal. We want to live a very neat, decent human life. And when we live, uh, even when we uh, think about it, we will be happy. Uh, then we don't want to uh, commit uh, uh, sensual misconduct, not only sexual, but sensual misconduct, because uh, when we do, uh, do, don't do that, uh, we will be respected by others, and that brings us happiness, uh, joy, uh, living very uh, decent life. So uh, then we, do, we live, uh, uh, earn our living uh, in an honest way. That brings us happiness. Then uh, we make effort to do to uh, prevent uh, any unwholesome thought arising in our mind, like killing, stealing, and so on. Unwholesome thought hindrances unwholesome thoughts. We don't want them to arise in our mind. We take precautions, remain mindful, uh, not to let them arise in our mind, and. Uh, then uh, uh, we live a very uh, good life, uh, and uh, if if we un if unwholesome thought arisen in our mind, we let it go uh, because it is painful. So we keep uh, making that kind of very wholesome, noble effort without hurting anybody. If a wholesome thought arose in our mind, we want to maintain it, cultivate it, and so forth. And then we want to practice mindfulness. When we practice mindfulness, uh, at that very moment we practice mindfulness, that very moment we are uh, relatively happy and peaceful. And we want to gain concentration. Uh, when we gain concentration, definitely, let alone seeing the truth as it is, at least we gain uh, uh, peace of mind. These are the, the benefits of practicing all these wholesome uh, steps of the Noble Eightfold Path. And these are wholesome and they produce wholesome results in our samsaric life. Uh, when they produce wholesome results, we want to do more and more of those things. So this goes on and on and on uh, as long as we continue to do this. But they are wholesome. They are noble. And yet, they have this, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, it's sort of a catch-22. On the other hand, it's uh, very wholesome, uh, and peaceful, happy, but uh, we are trapped. We cannot get out of it. And therefore, 
the Buddha said there is another kind of right view that is called uh, right view of uh, noble ones, noble uh, right view that is noble. Now, other also is uh, wholesome, but it is not called noble. Uh, you know, when we translate the, the, the very famous uh, heart of Buddha's teaching, the truth, four truths, they are called noble truth. Noble truth. Number one is noble truth of suffering. Somebody can ask, uh, what is the noble in suffering? <laughs> there is nothing noble in suffering. But noble is that it is truth. Truth is noble. Not uh, uh, many people uh, uh, think the uh, truth of uh, uh, existence is suffering. Just mere existence itself is suffering. Only when we are insightful and impartially watch the life, it is not only physical but mental, but there is something missing in our life. That missingness of something is very painful, agonizing state. Uh, that is called, uh, for instance, five aggregates. Buddha said, in short, Buddha summarized suffering in this uh, sentence. In short, the five aggregates of clinging are suffering. In short. That includes everything of suffering. And that is undeniable truth. That is undeniable truth. And when we see this truth impartially, you know, this truth we cannot separate from us. We cannot see that truth is over there, we are here. It is an integral part of our life. The very, ex this is called existential suffering. Suffering of exist, existing. This existential suffering uh, is, uh, uh, you cannot deny, and seeing this with insight, wisdom and impartially seeing this is noble. Not that kind of nobility. People may say that so-and-so is coming from a noble family, a noble tradition and so forth. Uh, but they are conventional noble. This is the noble in noble in noble in the highest sense of the term noble. Why it is noble? Because we have to be hundred percent sincere, honest to accept it as it is. And therefore uh, the second right that's the right view. Right view uh, that is called noble. And Taintless, that is another thing. Taint is, we call uh, asava in Pali. Uh, asava is influxes, continuously flowing. Uh, they call sometimes og, uh, yoga, yoga, and so forth. Uh, uh, when we talk og, uh, that is flood, uh, four types of flood. Kamog, Bhavog, Dittog, Avidyog, and so forth. Uh, these are ogres, uh, the floods. And we really don't want to be inundated in this flood. Uh, we want to be free from it. 
and therefore the when the mind is uh, slowly slowly uh, cleaning becomes pure and pure the mind becomes free from taint and therefore this no, this noble view uh, that this uh, view that is noble arises in the taintless state of mind without any greed any clinging any craving the mind is pure and therefore that is not mundane uh, mundane things uh, can have uh, variety uh, so can be differ can differ from person to person and so on but therefore this is not mundane this is super mundane beyond mundane level uh, of course when you hear the dear here depend uh, dip, uh, beyond mundane level you think or oh, i cannot attain that uh, that is for some special superhuman beings i am just ordinary human being and so forth you may think friends you become super you become super mundane only when you make your effort to be like that uh siddhartha gautam bodhisattva was not born as the buddha and uh, he kept on practicing practicing until practice became perfect similarly and buddha said that we can we, we also can attain that state and he gave the method system the noble eightfold path so we follow that and then the mind slowly Uh, when it uh, becomes uh, free from uh, taint uh, and becomes taintless this view arises there and therefore that is called super mundane right view and, and also it is the factor of the path factor of the path what is the path noble eightfold path and uh, noble eightfold path is called uh, sota sota and uh, one day buddha asked me about sariputta sariputta what is sota and uh, sota is used in pali for ear as well as a uh, stream of water but when the sariputta did not say uh, either ear or uh, stream of water he said i am a varyo athangu ko maggo bhante soto this very same noble eightfold path then the bhasa is called sota then buddha asked what is sota panna then buddha said that individual who attained that state who attained that noble no, noble eightfold path in the supramandan level that is called sota that person is called sota panna sota panna attainment is called sota patti the one that attained is called sota panna person now that is why we have uh, sota pan one who in the sota panna state and then one who is in sota panna fusion state these are two separate individual separate attainment and uh, uh, that is because of the the person followed the noble eightfold path and therefore the path is the factor of the path the right view of right view is the factor of that path that path that means a noble late fall path the person attains the stream entry uh, level by following the noble late fall path there is no any other path this is the only path when we follow the noble late fall path we uh, uh, attain the supramundane level of the noble late fall path uh, 
this is not some simple ordinary path. And therefore, uh, in that right view, there is no uh, greed, clinging, craving, attachment. This is not acquisition. This is letting go of acquisition. Uh, other one is, uh, has the desire to acquire, uh, hold on to something. And same way goes with the uh, supraman, uh, with the uh, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Now, uh, then uh, this is a right view. Then right uh, thought, uh, nekam, sankam, and so forth. Right thought, uh, the one who attains that state does not have to think in terms of letting go. Because letting go happens naturally, it is neither good nor bad, it simply is a state of mind that arises when you attain that noble state of uh, stream entry, noble state. That is why it is called noble, because uh, you simply prepare the mind to attain that state. When you attain that state, you don't uh, have to wish uh, let me attain such and such a state. You even don't think that I want to attain this state and so on. When the conditions are ready, as I mentioned earlier, independent origination, when the conditions are ready, depending on the ready conditions, this state arises in the mind. That means you don't have to think of letting go. It simply happens because the conditions you have fulfilled earlier and depending on that condition attain this state. And then uh, uh, the thought of uh, hatred. You don't have to practice metta at that level. Uh, metta is a part of that attainment. You have no partiality. You don't think so-and-so is my friend and so-and-so is not my friend. And this friend, uh, friend, enemy and all these are concepts, conventionally accepted concepts. And this concept does not arise in the mind of the one who is on the path or supramundane path. The mind is in a state where uh, neither friendliness nor unfriendliness arises, but the state is there, pure and clean state. Then cruelty, thought of cruelty, this is called, uh, you know, uh, virati in, in Pali terms, virati. This is just uh, the, uh, he doesn't have a very particular uh, thought, but mind naturally withdraws from uh, 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 what you call thought of cruelty. It doesn't, you, you don't have to make any special effort as mind becomes pure and clean. Even the thought of friendliness can disturb the mind, uh, let alone uh, causing uh, harm to anybody. The mind becomes mind become so. That is why it is noble. Similarly, uh, right uh, uh, action, and right livelihood, and so on, all these are, all these thought uh, arise in the mind, not as a thought, but the mind, pure, mind becomes simply pure and clean. Only one sees in that state is rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, whatever else is, there is no chance for anything to stay there. It is just like, uh, I mentioned many times in the past, it is just like trying to uh, balance uh, a mustard seed on the moving needle, the tip of a moving needle. 
Uh, so the persons does not have uh, even a wish to hold on to anything. Things are changing. So the person in the state, the mind of the person in the state, seeing uh, impermanence rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, in all conditioned things. Conditioners are rising and falling, and conditioned are rising and falling all the time. So, uh, there is no any uh, effort to hold on to anything. Uh, right effort, right action, right livelihood, all these uh, are happening very naturally as the factor of the total liberation. And uh, sometimes it is called uh, bodhi anger, uh, the fact of enlightenment, uh, and here in the say taintless, who possesses the noble path and is developing the noble path. The path is already if the per person uh, possesses the noble path. Only one who is uh, enter the stream entry. Uh, is qualified to to be called uh, one who was, uh, possesses the noble path and is developing the noble path. So now he attains the noble path and then he continues this noble path and develop it, cultivate it, multiply it, repeat it again and again for the higher attainment uh, of one's return and so on. So, uh, therefore, the Noble Eightfold Path has two sides. Uh, of course, view has wrong view and right view. Uh, wrong view we already have discussed. Uh, right view also discussed in uh, believing in uh, existing uh, mother and supporting mother, father and so, uh, father and so on, and then the the uh, wholesome right view divided into two. <coughs> One is uh, uh, wholesome right view, right uh, uh, thought and so on. All this noble eightfold path has wholesome, uh, which is uh, which uh, uh, ripened in. Acquisition, acquiring, holding, possessing. Like we say, Kama is my uh, relative, my friends, my inheritance and so forth. Kama, we, we, we have the ownership of Kama and so forth. This is uh, uh, Samaditi uh, that uh, believes in the ripening of uh, Kama, ownership of Kama, and so forth. Uh, that is one kind of uh, wholesome. That is wholesome. But that wholesome karma, uh, that wholesome view, that wholesome uh, noble eightfold path, uh, that uh, middle path, uh, of course, will help uh, one to uh, live in samsara in a uh, more pleasant state, human, divine, brahmas, and so on, for eons and eons they can go on existing. But no matter how long they exist, they exist with the suffering. The existence itself is suffering. And the Buddha, or before Buddha attained enlightenment, there were many who have been practicing all these things and attained such a, uh, high levels. And then Buddha found out that is the Buddha's supreme wisdom. He saw where is the end of that. And then he saw this mindfulness and the Noble Eightfold Path and he practiced and he broke that cycle, shattered, the, shattered it into pieces and end this repetition of birth and death in samsara. And therefore, friends, 
you can see dependent origination, how far it goes. And we want to unravel the, of the secret of it and we want to, uh, we want to end it. It is a cycle, cycle or circle, or when you have a circle or cycle, uh, you cannot uh, find a beginning or end of it. If you draw a, cycle, a circle on the board and ask somebody to find the uh, beginning or end of that circle, nobody can find. You may know mathematics, you may find the uh, uh, diameter, circumference, area, and so forth of the circle. But you will never find the beginning or end of the circle, no matter how much mathematics you know. And Buddha found the beginning and end. How did he do that? Just like on the circle, as a circle on the board, you draw a line. You draw a line crossing the circle, perimeter of the circle then that line is the beginning and the end. So he found the secret of this repetition of birth and death. And that, repeti that uh, the, the beginning of that is ignorance and craving. When ignorance ends, avijayatya nirodha and so forth, Buddha said, when the ignorance ends, everything crumbles down like a uh, like, uh, domino effect. They have domino effect. When one is broken, everything is crumbled, everything crumbles down. And that is how Buddha learned through his wisdom, through his practice, to end this repetition of birth and death. With this, I want to end today's talk, friends, and I like to uh, share marriage with everybody and wish everybody to be peaceful and happy, particularly those uh, as we started with Metta. We want to uh, wish all those who are in suffering, particularly this conventional mundane suffering. Suffering, of course, is mundane. There's nothing supramundane suffering. Anyway, uh, those who are in suffering, suffering from uh, COVID-19, hospitalized and pre uh, suffering at, at homes, may they recover very quickly and return to normal healthy life and live long in good health. And those who are uh, helping them like doctors, nurses, hospital staffs, and so on, uh, risking their own lives. Uh, may they be safe and continue their noble service uh, to uh, live long in good health. And there are others who are grieving the uh, death of their loved ones and may they be free from that grief through the understanding of Dhamma and return to no, uh, normal health and live long in good health. There are some leaders who are, uh, some, some, some people who are uh, doing, trying to find some solution like vaccine uh, or pills or something to uh, prevent this uh, from happening in future and to cure those who are suffering. And may they continue their search and be successful very quickly to help these people and the leader and the financial supporters continue their very wonderful general support. The leaders who have been helping and helped uh, with understanding and compassion may continue their wonderful service. And others who are working very hard to uh, uh, make right decision and uh, we wish them to be peaceful and happy and insightful uh, compassionate understanding and have uh, wisdom to make the white wise decision to make this COVID-19 bring to an end. With this I thank you all for friends 
for coming and participating in this practice and practicing. May you all be well.